know what it is. You see it in the thumbnail. Here we go. Oh my actual oh my god. It's a it's kind of a crazy thing. Come on now, come on now. We're getting there. We're getting closer and closer, yes, to 2021. I don't know about all of you, but I'm about ready to turn the page on 2020 and start a new year. That's, that's what I'm feeling right about now with what are we at? About three weeks to go in 2020. Oh man, what a year we have all had. But before we do, before we turn that page, I wanna make sure that we close out the books on the 2020 running shoe lineup, whether it's road running shoes or trail running shoes. So you may notice a little bit of an uptick in running shoe reviews publishing on the channel uh, in the next three weeks, basically, before we get to 2021. All right, sound good? And yes, I did put it to a vote. Producer poll, here we go. Thank you for voting. You know who you are. The On Cloud Stratus versus the Brooks Ghost 13 versus the Solomon Sonic 3 Accelerate or the Saucony Freedom 3 coming in first place with 36% of the vote. Yes, the Brooks Ghost 13, there it is. So I've tested it out finally for all of you. Thank you for voting and for chiming in and helping, yes, me chart the future of this channel, okay? Making me decisions. In fact, yesterday's producer poll, very interesting. What is gonna be the next running shoe battle? And yes, these producer polls are under the community tab. Um, I won't go through all the options. Let's just say coming in first place with 40% of the vote, the Sock and the Endorphin Speed versus the Hoka Mach 4. Fascinating choice. Thank you. Like, I cannot wait to do that running shoe battle. Sock and the Endorphin Speed uh, versus the Hoka Mach 4, which we'll be publishing on Monday. Okay, the about, what, five or six days from now. But here we go. Are you ready? Whenever a running, or sorry, whenever a, a box arrives at my house that, that is not in the shape of a, of a shoe box, I'm always a little perplexed. Like, what could that be? So I did actually already start opening this. You know what it is. You see it in the thumbnail. Here we go. Oh my, actually, oh my God. It's a, it's kind of a crazy thing here, everybody. So I was just unboxing it. Hold on. Let me just see if I can get it all the way out. Hold on. I gotta be, gotta be a little careful. There we go. So, oh, uh, I did not order this. And yes, we'll get to that shoe in one second, but just, just bear with me for a second. I don't know who you are. Maybe there's a note in the box, but if you, if you had something to do with this out there, hold on one second here. There we go. Here it is. Okay. I gotta be real careful here. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> it's a little, there we go. Can you see it? Shoo, 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 dio, shoo, dio. Oh my, somebody went out of their way. And I, again, I don't know who, hold on. Let me see if I can find a note here. Mm, um, let's see. I don't see a name, anybody, so. You might have to help me out if, if, and guess what? This person may want to remain anonymous. Okay, let's plug it in, see what it looks like. You are the best. Oh, you got it. You're just the best. I didn't you see it. Hold on. I think I might have to set it on the shelf to plug it in. Hold on here. Let me just set it here for a second. Hold on. Oh my goodness. We've got the best darn family on YouTube. Okay. Oh my goodness. I was going to do a countdown. Oh, wow. Oh, that looks so good. That looks better than I expected. Like it's like nice and bright. Okay. Unbelievable. So if you don't know the story, SH comes from the SH in shed, because this is literally my shed. OE comes from shoe, OE, okay? And then DO comes from studio. So we just put them all together. Shoe, DO, shoe, shoe, DO. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. You're on, unbelievable. Okay, 
Let's dive in. Oh man, first impression, not my full review. I'm, I'm, I don't know if I can do a shoe review now. I'm too excited to talk about the sign. Okay, here we go. It is the Brooks Ghost 13. Brooks Ghost 13, first impression, a neutral road running shoe. It's twisting, not as much as let's say a Skechers shoe or some uh, New Balance shoes this year. Uh, but yeah, it is definitely twisting the Brooks Ghost 13. Um, we're looking at, oh man, oh yeah, and here it is on your screen. Today's run, nice and easy after yesterday's double day. It was a really big day. So nice and easy, 10 miles. And here on your screen is the total miles that I've already put into the Brooks Ghost 13. Okay, so, but oh man, connecting to the title of the vlog, 12 millimeter drop, 12 millimeters, oh my my, 32 in the heel, 20 in the forefoot. Let me repeat, 32 in the heel, 20 in the forefoot. So we're basically looking at a low stack height in the in the forefoot and a high stack height almost you could almost make the argument that that is approaching maximalist. I mean, that's really on the border there between high and maximalist stack height. So, oh my goodness, we'll come back to the stack height in just one minute. Women's size eight, we're looking at 8.5 ounces, 240 grams, 9.7 for men's size nine. And in my size, let's just confirm, I believe we're looking at 9.1 ounces in my size or two. 157 grams. Okay, so there is my score for the weight. We'll come back to the weight in a minute. We're looking at a mesh upper in the Brooks Ghost 13, definitely breathable, and a, a roomy toe box. I was kind of surprised at how roomy my, my toes had plenty of room in there uh, to splay out. So there's the word on your screen, splay. Basically spread out. Um, I didn't feel scrunched up at all in the Brooks Ghost 13. It is not a gusseted tongue. Let me just confirm. Yep, not a gusseted tongue plush upper okay definitely through the collar and the tongue as well not as plush as like the Saucony ride 13 from earlier in the year like that Saucony lineup really was plush not quite that plush but it is a plush upper and they did redesign the heel counter for a better heel pocket lockdown and I felt it out there testing it's got a little bit of give there through the heel counter but I must say um, I felt very secure well, way more secure compared to the Adidas shoe from yesterday. In case you didn't see it, the Adidas SL20.2 first impression vlog published yesterday. Upper right hand corner for that. Moving on to that midsole, we are looking at the DNA Loft midsole, midsole foam. Um, let's do the durometer test. So I'm going to go with a soft landing, but dense, okay? Man, it's hard to describe, but it feels... Now, yeah, just, and you know, I noticed that in some other uh, Brooks shoes as well in the past. It's soft, but it's a dense, it almost is like a memory foam. There you go. It almost has, if anybody has uh, slept on memory foam or put their hand in the memory foam, it basically, uh, I don't think it has a ton of uh, quick snappy energy return. It's like you push into it and then it comes back slowly type of feel. Does that make sense? That's what I'm feeling in this Brooks Ghost 13 midsole foam, uh, but it was a very comfortable ride. I'll give you my comfort score here in a minute. Again, 12 millimeter drop, absolutely. Um, is there a shoe out there actually? Oh yeah, I was gonna ask the question of the day. Is there a shoe out there that has a higher stack height than 12? If there is one, let me know down in the comments. And I was going to ask um, question of the day at the end, but I'm actually going to ask right now for 2021, which running shoe would you like me to add to the testing rotation? What sh like the like the Ghost lineup? I actually skipped the Ghost 12. I did run in the Ghost 11, and I, I actually it was a little too slick actually on the inside of the shoe, the inner lining in the go in the Ghost uh, 11. So I skipped the 12 because I just didn't like the feel of the Ghost 11 inner lining. So in 2021, question of the day: What running shoe, whether it's road or trail, would you like me to really really consider? putting onto the, the, the radar of all these running shoe companies and tell them, hey, I'd love to test this shoe for everybody out there. So let me know, make your argument. Let me know why that shoe. And it probably think of a shoe, think of a shoe that I have not tested regularly on the channel. And if you're new to the channel, you might have to dig into the archive just a little bit. So there you go. Uh, overall score looking at a seven out of 10 for this midsole. Moving on to the outsole. We're looking at blown rubber. Oh boy. Look at all that rubber on the outsole. And you might be wondering, oh boy, Seth, you're going to go five out of 10, aren't you, for your score? I'm actually going to go 
eight out of 10. So here's why. First of all, they do have these flex grooves happening under the forefoot there and i felt it it just kind of helps the shoe uh flex a little bit under your forefoot and i must say i kind of enjoyed i could feel the flex grooves which um allows so this blown rubber everybody it's not too hard or firm it doesn't slap the pavement um it has a nice soft underfoot feel and the reason my score is so high is because they have put so much blown rubber on the bottom of this that is going to increase uh, the value of the shoe, but also the like the durability prediction in a big, big, big way. Okay, so I'm actually okay with this much rubber because it's not a hard rubber. It's a softer lean. It's it's actually pretty. I like it, uh, Brooks. You're doing a good job with this, and combined with those flex grooves, it doesn't feel too stiff underfoot. So good work there on the outsole hold on i gotta turn the heater down burning my leg okay here we go fit uh true to size and the reason the score is not a little higher is mostly because of that roomy toe box and the lockdown was fair it's just kind of an average feel uh through that lockdown for my comfort though very comfortable comfortable upper comfortable landing again though not incredibly energetic uh through that midsole uh just kind of, but a, but a soft landing 100 percent. okay my positives and drawbacks for the shoe my positive is the durability and i'll give you my prediction in one second my drawback is the 12 millimeter drop necessary that's my question i think this shoe would be it just feels i feel like brooks you might be cutting some people out of the equation for buying this shoe because they're a little nervous about the 12 millimeter drop. I think Brooks, you could drop it to 10 or nine and increase the amount of people that would be willing to try the shoe. And out there, like, I, so I run in so many different types of drops. I can feel the difference. I think a lot of people probably would never be able to feel the difference between eight and 12 or six and 12 or whatever the case is but I could feel it out there. And I'm just wondering, Brooks, if that's a little bit of a retraction to the overall um, uh, ability to reach people because it is such a high drop. So just keep that in mind. If you do buy this shoe, everybody, and it is available below, um, if you do buy it, I would recommend buying the shoe and then walking around your house for one to two weeks before you go running, especially if you're transitioning from a, a zero drop for sure, or a four millimeter drop, like a lot of Hoka shoes. Just keep that in mind when you're transitioning between drops. If you've never run in a 12 millimeter drop shoe, you might just, just tread slowly. Um, so you might have to have a little bit of uh, foresight with respect to buying the shoe and then just walking around a little bit, just to allow your, your legs to get used to that drop uh, before you start jogging in it. Durability prediction, we're looking at seven to 900 miles. There you go. If not, I mean, I think he could easily get 800, 900, maybe even more. I mean, I, I think this midsole is going to, I think everything is going to last. The upper, the midsole, and the outsole, 100%. So there is my score for the durability prediction. Awesome, awesome. So how will I use this shoe? Who is it best for? Classic daily trainer. I wouldn't even put it for me into the easy day cat category, but definitely a classic daily trainer. It is too heavy for a tempo day. Now, who is this shoe best for? Definitely someone that wants to buy one shoe, let's say every four to six months, rather than go back to the shoe store or order online or however you're picking up your running shoes, the shoe is just gonna go the distance and it is a very, it is very comfortable, okay? So I think that uh, if you just, uh, gosh, I am I wish I could take this shoe to seven, 800, nine. in fact, as always, if you do take this shoe or if you already have taken this shoe, to nine, you know, let's say above 700 miles. If you wouldn't mind taking some pictures, especially of the outsole, I'd be really interested to see how this blown rubber is surviving after 700 miles. Price point, $129, not too shabby. If it was 119, I'd be doing backflips in the studio. I'd be trying, I, I'd follow my head, but I'd be trying to do backflips because 119 is a great, great price point for daily trainers. 129 though isn't too shabby either okay so there's my score 
for the price point. Now, as far as other shoes to buy, here they are on your screen. I actually don't even know what I'm gonna select because I need to do a little more research figure out what shoes are falling into a similar category. There might not even be very many. So anyway, I'll put them on the screen right now for all of you to absorb. Shoe quick specs on your scale. Oh man, back to that 12 millimeter drop. And there is my early score on the screen, 7.2 out of 10. It actually barely beat out my score from yesterday for the Adidas SL 20.2. Very fascinating. So 7.2 out of 10, and uh, I do believe we will get this shoe to 50 miles sooner rather than later. There you go, everybody. Everybody, uh, Brooks Ghost 13, first impression in the book, in the studio, shoe studio. Oh, thank you so, so much. Unbelievable. Okay, everyone, thanks for being here. Thanks for watching. We will toss it to, uh, well, well, you know what? We'll toss it to, in case you missed it, yesterday's vlog all about the Adidas SL 20.2. Adidas. SL 20.2, first impression right there, right there. All right, Sig Beauty, work hard and love each other. See you too.